The Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston. It's The Cube, covering IBM Think. Brought to you by IBM. Hi everybody, welcome back to The Cube's coverage, wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the IBM Think 2020 digital event experience. My name is Dave Vellante. We've been going really all week and, and focusing on the impact of the pandemic, how IBM is responding, how customers are likely to respond. I'm really excited. Luke Niazzi is here. He's the Global Managing Director of Consumer Industries at IBM. Luke, good to see you. Nice to see you, Dave, and nice to be on the call. I mean, if, if, if I think about consumer, all the assumptions that we made about consumer behavior, they're really up in the air right now. I wonder if you could share with us what your current thinking is. I mean, the consumer has powered this global economy for years. What are you thinking about the consumer right now and the consumer behavior? Um, well, obviously, it's um, a massive shift in terms of the immediacy. Let me just backtrack a little bit, Dave, and uh, give you a bit of context. We did some research at the uh, beginning of the year that we launched the National Retail Federation, uh, and we surveyed over 19,000 people globally. And that survey showed that there were two big kind of uh, shifts that were occurring. First of all, there was a shift in uh, the purpose-driven consumer of the 19,000 people that we surveyed, 40% uh, of them said that they were making decisions that were purpose-driven um, compared to 41% that make decisions that were convenience. And that's people who care about sustainability and uh, where products are coming from. And the other big thing that we saw was um, shopping in uh, micro moments, increased uh, digital shopping kind of anytime, anywhere. Now, of course, with the pandemic, we are seeing an acceleration and um, uh, 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 a fast, fastening of um, those uh, activities. First of all, um, beyond the uh, immediate uh, move to uh, panic buying that occurred, we've seen a big, big shift in uh, online buying. And we think later on, it's going to drive also a reinforcement of this move to uh, more sustainable uh, products and services. Yeah, I mean, so right now you have, uh, I guess, buying for what's available here. You need something, it might not be available. As a consumer, you're making a lot of trade-offs. Okay, well, I'll go for, you know, alcohol-based uh, hand sanitizer, uh, you know, as opposed to just conventional hand sanitizer as an example. Oh, well, I'll make some trade-offs in, in tissue paper, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and maybe there's some boredom buying. I don't, I don't know if you've seen that. You know, people are, are shut in, but so all kinds of, uh, of daily changes, weekly changes. So how do you see this e exiting? Uh, how do you see compute, uh, consumer behavior you know, changing uh, as we exit this pandemic in waves? And we're not even sure how we're going to exit. Yeah. Our, our well, let me kind of break it down in terms of what's been going on right now. So, uh, of course, we saw this massive waves of, um, you know, a, a shift to uh, look for sanitary products, uh, a shift for groceries. Uh, then we've seen a, a kind of a different shift about how can I keep my kids entertained while they're at home uh, and um, kind of uh, more discretionary choices uh, being much lower. So when you kind of look at that in terms of actual impact on business, um, we've seen grocery, say, in the US up by about 27%. Uh, we've seen a move on digital uh, in the US um, about 3% of the global of the US population shifts about buys online that shifted to 43% uh, during uh, this period and of course uh, we think that these are things that are going to sustain what it's done is it's accelerated um, the type of purchases that people are doing in a digital context uh, and we think that that is you know going to continue for quite some time because of course the data on the pandemic looks like it's going to continue uh, for many months and, and in ways. So, so we've seen the shift to the digital and in, initially people um, are kind of looking for things anywhere, but it's going to be combined with a kind of a new type of delivery model. There's much more kind of buy online, pick up in center or distribution center, pick up at the car park, uh, whether that's you know your groceries or whether that's health related products. So it's going to change the delivery models uh, uh, it also means, of course, that stores are going to change a great, great deal. At the moment, grocery stores all have social distancing uh, with uh, the protection of the, uh, the store associates being you know, a key element of that. 
uh, you, you're going to see um, not the same amount of people in those stores going forward and, uh, you know, a different configuration and uh, application of technology also in store to uh, keep um, monitoring both the safety of the employees and the safety of the customers, but also to make sure that uh, occupancy levels are appropriate, etc. So big shifts to digital, to big shifts to different types of delivery models, um, you know, big shifts to uh, kind of uh, safety related technology. Of course, what we're also seeing, uh, and this is the difficult piece, which is, you know, if you have discretionary spend, fashion, apparel, luxury, the drop in those volumes are very, very significant to what's going on right now. I mean, look, I've actually been quite impressed with some uh, uh, providers that have pivoted very quickly to things like curbside pickup and, and have really responded, you know, quite fast to that. At the same time, I've seen others where, I mean, it's clear uh, that they really didn't have the infrastructure or the processes. Uh, they're asking, hey, how, how did we do? Do you mind taking a quick survey? Because they need to iterate. Uh, how can IBM help those that really weren't that prepared and have sort of band-aided together some solutions get to the point post pandemic uh, before this thing ends where they really need to be? What are you guys doing with clients? Yeah, so well, first and foremost, um... Uh, as the pandemic hit, we focused very much on resiliency, making sure that our clients could operate as, uh, as robustly as possible. And in fact, um, you know, 95% of our services are being delivered digitally and, and remotely, right? Um, what then happened was, uh, how do I deal with these massive uh, call volumes that are occurring in my call centers, where, by the way, I have less staff because some people are, are having to um, keep themselves safe and uh, and socially distanced. And so we deployed immediately beyond our resiliency uh, solutions, uh, call center chatbots that are helping our clients both prioritize and, and screen calls. And one of our major uh, uh, retail clients in the US said, you know, I thought that the Watson chatbot technologies were going to be helpful. They weren't just helpful, they saved us. And so that kind of thing's occurring in the immediate sense. Um, the next piece, of course, you then start to see is that uh, clients have realized that both their um, digital channels and their fulfillment models have not been able to keep up. Nobody has been able to keep up with the demand that's occurred. Not even Amazon's been able to keep up. And what was, you know, a 24, 48 hour delivery slot, those those kind of slots have gone out the window. So we are going to see a next wave of reinvestment in enhancing uh, digital channels. And we will leverage know both our um uh, our services business as well as our cloud technologies to support that and then underpinning that you're you're also seeing a need to rebalance the supply chain because of course uh where products can come from have changed uh where um things can be sourced is now having to move much more from uh, a global supply chain to a global local supply chain and we're having to balance supply with more local um, uh, providers. And so there's a there's a demand supply uh, balancing to be done. That means that clients are kind of think about um, the practicalities of that, but they're investing in uh, next generation technologies to support that. For IBM, that things like our IBM Sterling portfolio, but it's also the application of our supply chain AI to this uh, massive demand supply um, kind of imbalancing. And we've been helping certain clients uh, look at that and move stock to the most appropriate locations. We've been uh, doing that to help our clients uh, kind of rethink that there's a, there's supply chain. So we're going to see a lot of that. We kind of call it the intelligent supply chain, and we're going to see you know investment in the intelligent supply chain, just like we see this investment occurring uh, in um, the change in the commerce engines. Last thing to say is track and trace is going to be hugely important. Track and trace of all products and where they come from and where they were handled. And of course, back in the case of people. And so technologies like blockchain and what we do with food trust are also going to be a really important element. Of that. Yeah, another really key piece of digital. I mean, the Cube, we go to physical events and we've been saying that, saying that this, this was just not going to go back to 2019. The people are going to mm -hmm. learn through this experience that there's really some additional value that they, they can create through digital. You, th you think about consumer, that's a it, much, much more complex environment. You're talking about tens of thousands, or potentially hundreds of thousands, or even millions of types of products. You mentioned chatbots, you know, the entire experience that we talked about, uh, like curbside pickup. 
lead times, people, you know, managing demand with lead times. You can only or, or, or limiting uh, the volume. You mm -hmm. mentioned supply chain, track and trace, blockchain. So a whole new set of digital assumptions are going to emerge or are emerging. I don't want to make it sound like there's a there's some kind of binary beginning and end to this thing. This is this is going to be a slow but yet fast iteration uh, of constant iteration and continuous improvement, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. Um, uh, one, one of my uh, clients in Europe, actually, we were talking earlier this uh, this week, and they said, "Look, um, as, as difficult the environment is right now, and of course we've been focused on it, on our current um, operations and fulfilling our customers as best we can. It's actually bringing us um, to a whole new window about to rethink the priorities of our investments and how we look at that going forward." And, you know, he's, he's almost saying, well, I'm going to have to go to a zero-based budgeting approach. And against that, we're going to see uh, a much greater investment in uh, commerce, regardless of what your model is, whether you are digital first or physical first, you're going to see a much greater uh, focus on um, kind of dealing with the capacity and the variability that we've experienced because organizations weren't geared up for that. And you're going to see then the investment in the intelligence and the supply chain to support that backed up with trust and uh, traceability. And you know, back to the points that I started at the beginning of this discussion, uh, it means that the trends that we saw and we assessed actually are going to be almost perpetuated because we think um, this, this move to sustainable and more local sourcing, more balanced sourcing will continue to be a big factor um, and we think that this kind of idea of shopping in the micro moment, but shopping in a much more digital way is here to stay. Of course, the consequence of that is it's going to have a quite a big impact on uh, the physical environments. And unfortunately, there aren't going to um, there are going to be casualties in, in this for certain uh, sectors that are not going to be able to sustain the, the big shift in the model. So obviously physical down for the, the immediate and probably mid and maybe even long term, digital mm -hmm. up. Uh, you, one of your areas of expertise is agribusiness. We've talked mm -hmm. about you know consumer in general. I wonder if you could share with us what you're what you're seeing there. I'm, I'm inferring more more local sourcing, uh, which obviously has uh, some impacts on what's available at different times of year, potentially on on pricing. Uh, thoughts on on agribusiness and how they're responding. Yeah, well, it, it's it's, um, uh, it's fascinating. You know, if you take it into two chunks, first of all, of course, you know, um, agriculture has been impacted right now um, by um, uh, not so much for the professional farming, which has a large scale uh, mechanization, but for uh, a lot of farming in you know, large parts of Asia or Latin uh, parts of Latin America or uh, parts of uh, Africa and even parts of Europe, there's a lot of transitionary labor that occurs in order to be able to um, uh, harvest the crops. And so that's a that's a really difficult immediate problem. We've seen you know people volunteering in certain countries, like here in the UK where I live, uh, you know, people volunteering who can't work in their current job and say, how can I help with the harvest? And that's kind of a, an immediate thing that's needed right now. But the, the broader uh, topic and the work that my teams do is that actually the, the application of um, digital technologies and science to agriculture is, is behind what occurs in other industries. And there's such a great opportunity by leveraging digital technology to be more effective in actually getting the most out of farming land uh, without um, uh, over farming the land. And so we're working quite a lot on uh, digital agronomics uh, applying um, traceability truly from farm to fork, uh, and you know, starting to bring together data sources that were not in the same place to be able to help build um, effectively uh, an agri-cloud type capability for the benefit of farmers. And across those things, we're going to see farmers empowered with more information and more uh, insight. So simple things like um, the weather channel uh, uh, application that we have from our weather company. We're deploying that to millions of farmers in Africa and Asia. And on top of that, we're being able to plan for uh, the deployment of other related information. So, you know, how to farm, but also we could start to uh, look at how to provide safety related information, et cetera, uh, to those farmers. 
So, so we are going to see, um, through effective use of technology, increased appropriate digitization of um, you know, farming processes. And, and it'll be at a very practical level, what I can put onto my phone. Um, so, so definitely, this is a big thing. And, and of course, as you know, um, the traceability that we do with our food trust engine isn't just about safety. It can talk about how food was produced, how far it's traveled, what conditions was it handled in, what's its CO2 footprint. And so that traceability engine can actually accelerate also the sustainability agenda that I referred to earlier. Well, Luke, I mean, as we're discussing, you know, the moment by moment, the assumptions are, are changing. Um, you know, the narrative this weekend, of course, at least in the U.S., was, hey, we've got to just now get out there. And, and, and many are saying this, not all, but, but just affect mass immunity, uh, that it, it's really going to be the only way. Uh, vaccines aren't coming anytime soon. Young people will go out, retail environment. Of course, you're still going to have social distancing. People that are compromised or are older aren't going to go out. So clearly volumes are going to be down. But it's a very fluid situation. So business resiliency and flexibility is critical here. And it mm -hmm. sounds like you're helping organizations really build that into their operating model. That is critical. Yeah, ab absolutely. And, um, you know, for some of the brand categories that I haven't talked about so much, you know, what you're seeing in things like apparel, fashion and luxury is a a move to try to drive that engagement uh, to you, the customer, in a much more digital sense. So how do I interact with the brand? How do I experience the brand? How can I go all the way through to my purchase um, digitally when I don't have the ability to get to stores? So this digital um, transformation agenda will affect pretty much all uh, major um, segments. Uh, obviously, the food supply chain, the healthcare supply chain is the focus right now, but we will see on increasing digitization uh, and a need to rebalance the in-store experience, even for the, the fashion and apparel uh, and luxury segments. And so um, there will be a lot of transformation to be done, uh, while, of course, having to deal with the cost balancing that needs to occur uh, in these industries as they effectively shift more, more, more towards digital. Yeah, you're right. I mean, the, the, the cost structure may dramatically change, yet at the same time, it may be critical for, for maintaining or even gaining market share. So a lot of potential uh, disruption. Luke, I'll give you the, the, the final word, um, your thoughts. Uh, bring us home, please. Well, you know, first of all, you know, people's um, well-being and safety is our paramount focus, and that's what we've been looking at uh, from the outset. But I think people should be positive that um, there is a lot of opportunity in which we can um, uh, deliver the things that they need in a safe way, in a secure way, in a digital way that is um, able to cope with uh, the environments that we see today and may prevail. And it's about bringing that intelligence and innovation into um, both the commerce uh, and the digital channels and into the supply chains all the way through to the track and trace, which is what we focus on. Well, Luke, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. It was great to have you with your, your insights. I mean, IBM very clearly has its, uh, has its hands in a lot of these different industries, and it's great to have your industry expertise sharing with our audience. I really appreciate your time. Take care. Thank you. All right, and thank you for watching, everybody. This is Dave Vellante for our continuous coverage of IBM Think Digital Event Experience 2020. You're watching theCUBE. Right back, right after this short break.